snatchers from Gaza which told the truth, when BBC was not telling the truth, when other outlets were not telling the truth, Mushir told the truth. And we are deeply, deeply grateful to Mushir and Kasa for this. And as I said before the crowd arrived, there is a lesson here for us all. Mushir's come back from scenes of horror, from loss of relatives and loved ones, and he's still fighting on. If Mushir can do this, we can carry on for the long haul that it will be to save Palestine and to get justice for Palestine. So I'm very proud to introduce him and hand the microphone to Mushir. Thank you very much. I'm really honoured to be here among you. And the reason I'm happy with this big number despite the big demonstration in London is that a message we want to send to the Palestinians from the northern part of the Gaza Strip who were altered under terror, under threats of bombing, under bombing to leave their homes, 1.1 million Palestinians in the ugliest collective punishment that has happened in the last period I remember 1.1 million were just ordered or bound to leave. And yesterday I was speaking to a friend, Mahmoud Abu Rabia from Beit Lahia, who fled 20 days ago to my town, Khan Yunis. And he told me that 80 members of his family and extended family were kicked out of their homes by the ground troops, by the cowardly Israeli ground troops. They were not allowed to carry anything. They just walked from Beit Lahia to Salaam Salah al-Din Street until they reached Khan Yunis. They had nothing, no food, no clothes, no money, nothing. They weren't allowed to carry anything. Those are 80 people out of 1.1 million. 800,000 have moved already under the threat of bombing. This is the level of war crime that is happening in the Gaza Strip. Those people have nothing. Who on earth gave the Israelis the right or the British government the right to support such an ugly collective punishment? Such an ugly war crime. the ugly economical relationship with Israel. It's the ugly supremacy. Let's, let's have no doubt about it. Those people in power and their entourage and those companies are supremacists. They don't look at us Palestinians or anybody else for that matter who doesn't belong to their club as equal human beings. They look at Palestinians as worth nothing. All what they want to talk about is the life of the Israelis. I stand here as a human being and I say it loud and clear. I feel sorry for the loss of any civilian life, life anywhere in the world. Israelis, Palestinians, out of the river. What? What? But let me make it clear. Those Israeli who, Israelis who were killed or are, who are the victims of their army, are the victims of their racist government who for 75 years subjected the Palestinians to humiliation, exploitation, to bigotry, to theft of land, to theft of water. I'm standing here and I will send a message on behalf of you all to the people for Beit Hanun, Beit Lahia, the beach camp, Shijaiya, Al Zawaida, Abdarat, Al Tufah, Abbasan Khzaa. Those are areas which were forced to leave my town, Khan Yunis, where I was there with my beloved son Kasim. It's 400,000. Now the population is 1.1 million. 700,000 have just arrived. That's why I'm saying to you that I'm so proud that on behalf of you all, we managed within our, within our efforts to support so far 1,270 Palestinian families with food boxes, blankets. <laughs> That's why I'm having you 
Now, when my brother here and Comrade Javid and others come around with buckets, continue with this because we are continuing. We have a team on the ground now, a team that is very committed to distributing 40, 50 families every, every day. And as I said, families that keep coming, keep coming. And now winter is coming in and they have nothing. Many of them are on the streets, on cardboards. My friend Mahmoud from Betlaa told me he's trying to find cardboards to put his family on, on the pavements. This is the ugly face of Israel. This is the ugly face of the British, of the British government. I'll just share something with you. Annie talked about never stop dreaming. Qasim and I went to film after the bombing. They bombed the house, four best-story building, killing 13 people of the same family. And when we arrived there, and they were pulling out the bodies out of the rubble, including three children, Yunus, Ahmed, and Omar, who attended Never Stop Dreaming. And one of them was a major singer in the choir. The same day, I saw Richie Sunak bragging on a British carrier with weapons, with missiles that are killing our babies, our children, and simulating them. Shame! Richie Sunak and the British government are taking part in those crimes. It is bragging on a carrier, ship carrier, and giving the Israelis the, the, the missiles that are incinerating our babies. I was, I was two baby relatives in a place called Sheikh Nazim Khan Yunis. I blurred their images on my Facebook page because I didn't want people to see the sharp bodies of babies, breastfeeding babies. This is the ugly face the ugly face of the so-called British civilization, or American civilization, or French civilization. They look at us as if we are not human beings enough, and this must stop. How on earth can 20 hospitals be bombed over the last six days? How on earth can the biggest hospital now is under attack in the Gaza Strip as Shifa Hospital? Yesterday, in the early hours of the morning, a baby died in the children's hospital in the Nassau Street because of lack of oxygen. Solar, diesel, don't have now, the hospitals don't have solar or diesel. This is the level of war crimes. They are rendered international law, human rights convention, irrelevant because Israel is, on, is on, <coughs> in, in the picture. This is unbelievable and this must stop. We're not standing here because we are Palestinians or supporters of Palestinians. We're standing for humanity. We're standing to say, if you stop solar and diesel reaching hospital, then you are a criminal. And there are no two ways about it. No two ways about it. <laughs> and they describe what the Palestinians did on the 7th of October. And they say the barbarity of the 7th of October. And then the human catastrophe of the Gaza Strip. This is racism. The barbarity of what's happening in, in, in the Gaza Strip. 17 members of my own family, my beloved relatives, were killed in two F-16 attacks. I didn't take a photo. One of the children was decapitated. Aziz, my beloved pharmacist relative, was cut in half. We collected his body from one side and the other, the other half from the other side. Hatim, a peaceful man was thrown out of his diet. His brother's son, Misho, was, was thrown in the back. Children are being killed. If Richie Sunak doesn't care that six Palestinian children are killed per hour, four women are killed per hour, and that and they're stopping the calls for ceasefire, then they are part of this crime. They are definitely part of this crime. I'm not sure about it. Let me tell you something. I stand here with my head held high because of the level of togetherness of the Palestinians, the level of togetherness between people. People leave their homes, men, men, men leave their homes for families so women can live with their women, they live on the streets. People are sharing food, people are sharing everything. And let me tell you something that is really descriptive of the picture. I ask so many people, how do you feel? And you know the answer of so many people in the past, they were killing us slowly. Now, they are killing us in a higher speed. This is how the Palestinians feel. And this is what we must remember. The oppression of Palestinians didn't start with this bombing. The
oppression of the Palestinians, the killing of the Palestinians everywhere is ongoing. 279 Palestinian civilians were killed in the West Bank. Does the world care? Does the world condemn Israel? 49 children out of 279 in the West Bank. Does the world care? It's only our blood is so cheap. And this is the racism of capitalism, of racism, of imperialism. And there are two ways about it. And we must fight it, we must stand together. saying that your presence here is a statement that this government doesn't represent us, that this government shame for stand. <laughs> and I make sure that the passage is loud and clear back in Palestine, that not only in Sheffield, everywhere, but to see all these people in Sheffield is a clear statement that we're standing with our press, we're standing against the oppressor, and we're standing against the distortion of facts that making the oppressors oppressed in the eyes of people and the media which is shameful and biased and we stand to say enough is enough 75 years of suffering we must go on the offense and say you are supremacists you are not considering us human beings we must fight all accusations of anti-semitism because we know we never anti-Semitic. We fight anti-Semitism. We always proud to fight the racism, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism. <laughs> and we must go on the offense and say to these people who are trying to justify the Israeli crimes, you are supremacist, you are racist, you don't care about uh, six children being killed every hour, four women, elderly people, destruction of hospitals, destruction of water supplies. Have you heard of this, the church of Preferius in Gaza, one of the oldest? It was bombed to the ground, 22 mark, 22 civilians were killed while sheltering. How many of them this happen? I salute you, I stand really in honor with you here to send a message to the people of Gaza despite this massive, ugly, barbaric attack that is using the most sophisticated weapons that we saw. We saw, me and Kassim, first hand. We saw it in my neighborhood. We saw it in other areas. That despite all this, justice will prevail no matter how long it will take because all big powers like Israel and American laws who are built on exploitation, bigotry, subjugation, killing, murder, theft, were finished in history, and that will happen.